We return you now to your regularly scheduled program. I'm a mask up and take it, 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 mask up and take it. Alright, and let it be known that this is basically me defending myself against someone who's been talking shit about me for years, which is retardedly ironic because this dude is the one that's fucked me over. I know you're watching, and the best piece of advice I got for you is to fucking drop it. I don't like you, I don't want to talk to you, I continually block you and you make new accounts to try to contact me, I'm definitely not calling you from a private number to threaten your life. If I've got something to say to or about you, I'll do it right here, in a video, in front of everybody. And with all that being said, let's go ahead and get on into this unboxing. Today we've got an eBay pickup that absolutely was not cheap, did not get this as a steal, I actually got into a bidding war with someone that I'm just assuming knew that I was going to go after the mask and upbid me for no reason, because I don't really see a lot of other collectors out there that were willing to spend the amount of money that this thing got bid up to, but I won, so it's here now, and uh, I've been after this for a very, very long time, and as we pull it out of the box, I will explain a little bit about the mask, why I wanted it, so on and so forth. All right. This is one of those times where the eBay seller had to be like, what the fuck is going on? Why is this going for so much money? Okay, in the box, we have a Don Post wired mask. And this thing is absolutely fucking mint, even better than it looked in the photos. Insanely good. And what's probably pretty obvious to you guys is that this mask looks a lot like a Hellraiser mask, a pinhead, if you will. And that is because it is basically a ripoff of a Hellraiser mask, and uh, this is just a Dawn Post piece that's supposed to look like a Cenobite, and it's called Wired because rather than having pins sticking out, it's got wires going in, which still give it the effect of having the square pattern on the face. This is probably the nicest kind copy that I know of, and I only know of two other copies that exist, both owned by the Mask Hunter, so I am now in the exclusive Wired Club. One of three copies. I know that one of his copies is absolutely beautiful, but I haven't actually looked at the photos close enough to tell if it's like this kind of condition. I'm pretty sure it's pretty nice, but then another one of his copies is actually missing this collar down here. I'm going to have to look. I probably should have looked before I filmed this video, but I was definitely excited to go ahead and take this thing out. Still tagged even. We got the care sheet on there, the original wired tag. Fucking sick. So I'm going to set this down and uh, just give you guys a little bit of information as far as why I wanted it in my collection. Clearly, we're in front of the Buckethead stuff today meaning that this is a Buckethead Oddball mask. And for those of you guys that may be unfamiliar with the term Oddball, it's just something that I came up with when I started doing Slipknot pieces that were used once or twice by a member or seen side stage or used in a music video but nowhere else. Just masks that weren't used too commonly or aren't the ones that you think of when you think of that person. The same rule applies to my Michael Myers stuff. I actually just did a Michael Myers Oddball video if you guys would like to check that out. I explained all of the Oddballs in my collection and the Oddballs that I still need to get. And the same exact rule applies to my Buckethead stuff. If it isn't the plain white Caesar mask and a bucket on his head, it's probably an oddball. Buckethead is a big time horror fan and he definitely incorporated a lot of horror related masks into his career. It definitely isn't uncommon to see him dressed up in a Leatherface mask or a Michael Myers mask or even a Jason mask. And there are tons of other masks in between those that aren't related to horror at all, like a baby face that's laughing or a space monkey or an Esquire. There's just all kinds of them. So if you guys haven't dived too deep into the Buckethead stuff, make sure to check out my oddball videos and this video will probably make a little more sense to you. So this is actually the mask that started the entire oddball thing for me with Buckethead. I noticed that he wore one of these while sound checking with Guns N' Roses, I believe, and there's only two photos of him wearing it out there, but it's a very strange mask. We definitely just thought that it was a pinhead mask, but it turns out that it is just an off-brand pinhead mask. Kind of like how there's off-brand House of Masks. Well, this is the Don Post version of a pinhead. And it's definitely a very cool mask. It is, uh, it's actually not as corny or cheesy as you'd think because the face is pretty sinister and just the overall design is pretty weird. And uh, when I saw Buckethead wearing that, I started diving into the other different props and masks that he used over time. And now I finally have one. This one was just like one of the most elusive to find. I still do need a couple other pieces, but this is one that I was definitely looking to check off and one that I thought that I might not ever get to check off. So to say that I'm stoked is an understatement. As I mentioned, I did get this off of eBay and it was in a bidding war. I don't know why I keep air quoting everything because there's nothing like subtle about that or a different type of meaning. It was definitely a bidding war. Somebody else wanted this and I just happened to sneak in a huge bid at the end 
And uh, their bid was pretty big too, but I beat them by like $100. So yeah, not super crazy about the price, but hey, I might not ever see one of these again. So I needed to grab it now. And I'm glad that I did because this one is fucking beautiful. The pictures that were uploaded to eBay didn't look that great as far as the quality. So I couldn't tell if there was like rot spots in between these lines or anything like that. But this one has definitely been taken care of. And yeah, I'm just super happy. Another Buckethead Oddball. They even threw in a foam head, so I don't even need to put it on display. They already did it for me. So I think that is going to pretty much do it for today's video. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching. As always, I'm going to go ahead and leave this guy on display, give you some nice up close shots of it, give you some nice up close shots of it, and that will be that. So thank you very, very much for watching. Say no to drugs and alcohol, and until next time, we will see you later. Actually, we started today's video off pretty negatively, so let's do something nice for somebody. Who's a good guy and deserves something nice right now? Let's see. Oh, here's something. So, um, my friend Nico just put out a mask video a couple days ago, and it's been a minute since he made a video, so let's all go surprise him. I'm going to add this link in the description. Let's just go to that video and say, what should we say? Ah, oh, here, we'll do this. We'll have a spin-off on my own thing. I love Nico Martin, and I hate AJ Good. All right, I was the first one to comment it. Go comment, I love Nico Martin, and I hate AJ Good. I think seeing a bunch of funny comments on there will make Nico's day, and Nico deserves it because he's a great guy. Ending things on a positive note. Okay, I've already done my outro, so I'm not really sure what to do now. Say no to drugs and alcohol again. Um, I actually didn't want to order anything. I just wanted to take a second to thank a couple of my high tier patrons like Hunter Land, Tyler Rizzuto, Nightshade, Clancy James, and Matthew Lewis. You wanted to do what now? I just wanted to thank a couple of my high tier patrons. High tier patrons? Yep, that's all I wanted. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh-huh. Bye.